This morning, family, I'm speaking on getting fear out. I thought I'll get more amens than that. I'm speaking on getting fear out. Now, you have heard me minister many times on getting fear out. You have had her dad and many other ministers and, and preachers and pastors and teachers of the gospel teaching on how to get fear out. And as much as what we can teach you about it, it's up to you to get it out. You got to do the work. Amen. You have got to do the work. So don't close yourself off and say, oh, I've heard this before. We are dealing with fear on a daily basis. On a daily, daily basis. And we got to be strong in the Lord to resist the enemy that goes about as a roaring lion. He's not a, he's not a roaring lion. He goes about as trying to intimidate you, trying to scare you. And so if you can get fear out, who's the true lion? The lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. So the, the, the enemy is such an imitator. Going about as a roaring lion. When the lion of the tribe of Judah lives in us. Amen. Hallelujah. And so getting fear out this morning. And we are living in a world riddled with fear. Fear of the virus. Fear of sickness. Fear of disease. Of lack. Of not having enough. Amen. People are losing jobs. Companies are closing down. You know, we're living in a world of uncertainty. When nothing just seems to be certain. You hear of people that you have just spoken to now and then the next moment they're gone. Uncertain times. And it's not just the virus, it's accidents happening all around us. And people going through such turmoil and challenging times. And when you hear about these times, if you do not have your shield of faith up, it is easy for the enemy to penetrate your heart with fear. And so although we are not of this world, if we don't guard our hearts against what's going on around us, we will live fear-controlled lives. When we allow fear to control us, we become slaves to it. You remember the song that we used to sing back then? I'm no longer a slave to fear. Because when, when fear enters you, fear is a dictator. And you become a slave to it. Fear will dictate your every move. In fact, fear is Satan's primary weapon. If he can get in with fear, he's got you exactly where he wants you to be. So Satan moves in response to fear. And, and please write this down for those of you that are taking notes. Satan moves in response to fear the same way God moves in response to faith. The same way, no difference. Satan moves in response to your fear and God moves in response to your faith. Amen. So the devil uses fear to challenge the promises of God, just like what he did in the beginning with, with Eve in the garden. Did God really say? Did he really say? And that's exactly how the devil comes to torment us. Can you really trust the word of God in these uncertain times? Can you really trust it? And he comes and he sits you on your little shoulder and he comes and he torments you with all kinds of things. He's a tormentor. And you can have a full-on conversation with the devil in your mind. A full-on conversation. Oh, you're going to go under. You're going to lose your job. Your company's going to be next. What about your car? What about your house payment? What about your children? What about your child that needs to go to university? What about this? What about that? This is going to get repossessed. You know what the enemy's doing? He's tormenting you. And he's trying to get you to conversate with him. Trying to get you to buy into his little lies. And what does the word of God say? Give him no foothold. In other words, don't entertain him. When he's trying to have those little conversations, don't entertain him. Don't allow him in. It's like when someone puts you on the spot. And, and, and you can show by a raise of hands because I know I, I've, I've had to do this before. It's like when somebody puts you on the spot and they ask you for your telephone number and your cell number, but you don't really want to give them. But they put you on the spot. And then you think in your mind, should I change the last digit so they can't get hold of me? <laughs> and you give them the number. And what happens is they start messaging you, WhatsApping you, and they start calling you all times and odd times, and, and they're on the phone with you all the time. And you get irritated, and you start ignoring the messages. And you start ignoring the calls. And eventually you do what? You block them. And eventually you say, you know what, I've had enough. Because I didn't really want to give you my number in the first place. But because I was put on the spot, 
I am now, I've given you access. And that's exactly what we do. The devil puts us on the spot many times. And we give in. And once we have given in to him, he now has access to us. Give him no foothold. Now he has access. Just like that person who you now have to block. And that is exactly family. When you, once you have given him access, you need to go against him by the word of God. That is the only way to get him out. Amen. And what is the enemy after? He's after your words. He's after you speaking things. Amen. And just like that person, when you give the enemy access, you give him a foothold in your life. And we should give him no foothold. Amen. You might say, well, possibly, you know, I simply just don't respond. Well, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And let me tell you, if you are thinking defeat and thinking lack and thinking fear, eventually you're going to start speaking it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth leaks. Because the more you put it in, eventually it's going to come out. And people say, I've always wanted to give you a piece of my mind. <laughs> because it's what has been going on in the heart. And the mouth starts leaking. Amen. So if you think defeat, if you think lack, if you think fear, you're going to start speaking. It's just a matter of time. So fear is a battle. Amen. Fear is a battle in your mind. But you don't combat thoughts with thoughts. How do you combat it? With words. Amen. You don't combat thoughts with thoughts. You combat thoughts with words. Amen. So when the devil comes to threaten you and mess with your mind and mess with your thoughts, you have to speak against that by raising up what? The word of God against him. Hallelujah. Your constitution is what you need to speak, not your emotion. You got to speak your constitution. Not, oh my gosh, what, are, what am I going to do? Oh my gosh, I've got a pain here. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling like, like something is in my throat. Oh, no. What do you do? You raise your shield of faith against that. And you say, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Amen. That I've got no fear, no lack. Jesus became poor so that I can be rich. It's not a dirty word. It's good to be rich. Hallelujah. So you got to speak the blessing to speak, to see the blessing. Amen. When you speak the words, God does the works. He goes to work. Pastor Wellington has done this illustration beautifully many times. It says when you go into a restaurant and you go and you order, that restaurant might have been quiet the whole time. The minute you walk in there and you sit down and they hand you a menu and you start to repeat exactly what is on that menu, the words you have spoken makes everybody in that kitchen go to work to bring to pass your request. So when you speak the words, God does the work. Hallelujah. Remember our kingdom as voice activated. We've got this new thing that we got in the week. We got it about two months back and it's just been lying on Pastor Wellington's desk. And then this week he decided to just open it up. And so we've been having some great fun with this thing at home. And, and her name is, okay, Google. She says that's her name and she doesn't want a nickname. And we can't call it, we can't call it anything else because that's the only way she'll respond to you. And so, um, you know, she's voice activated. And so in the morning when you say, okay, Google, good morning. She says, good morning. Would you like me to switch the lights on and turn the coffee on? She does that. And she's voice activated. She is going to lie there dormant until you speak to her. But she can speak. And she can do certain things. She can switch on the TV. She can go to Netflix. She, on, all by your voice. And our kingdom is voice activated. Remember in Genesis, light be, light was. So until you start to speak against the fear, nothing is going to change. Amen. Psalm 107 verse 2 says this in the KJV. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You have been redeemed from coronavirus. You have been redeemed from sickness and disease and lack and poverty and, and everything that the enemy tries to challenge you with. Amen. And let's read that in the, the same scripture but in the New Living. And it says this. Has the Lord redeemed you? And the church says, amen. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. <laughs> so you need to speak the blessing and not the curse, family. Amen. In the midst of what the world is facing right now, we can't speak what is going on. We can't speak. Remember that Pastor Wellington says, if God had come on the scene and said, oh my gosh, it's so dark. No, he didn't do that. 
He didn't speak what he saw. He spoke what he wanted to see. So stop what you are seeing. Stop speaking what you are seeing and start speaking what you want to see. Amen. God will grant you the desires of your heart. So we need to speak the blessing and not the curse in the midst of what is going on. We need to speak the word of God in our constitution. Amen. We need to speak our redemption. We need to speak our redemption. We can't buy in when you're standing with your colleagues or you're standing with somebody that's living in your block of flats or in your neighborhood or your neighbor across the fence or whoever it is. And they start speaking, oh my gosh, have you heard this and this and that? You can't entertain that. As the Lord redeemed you, then tell others about it. Amen. Tell others about his redemptive power. Hallelujah. Let's read what Psalm 35 verse 27 says in the KJV. And it says, yeah, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yeah, let them say what? Continually. Not, not a once off thing. Let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Amen. Let the Lord be magnified. So what are you doing when you speak the word of God against whatever the enemy is challenging you with and trying to bring fear? You are magnifying God above that thing. So you are saying it continually. Amen. You're not speaking your circumstance. You're speaking the blessing. Amen. And what you say matters because it will either feed your faith or it will feed your fear. And what are you saying continually? So therefore say continually, let the Lord who has pleasure, amen, in my prosperity. It gives him great delight to prosper me. That's what Pastor Wellington and I say. It gives God great delight to prosper and to increase us, us and our children and our church family. Amen. We speak the same blessing over you. Amen. See, fear and faith are spiritual connectors. The one connects you to fear and the one connects you to faith. That's what it does. Fear and faith are spiritual connectors. The one will connect you to fear and the other one will connect you to faith. Amen. And to life and to death as well. And the power of death is what? Where is it? The power of death and life is where? It's in the power of the tongue. So you can either speak your way out or you can speak your way in to stay where you're at. Amen. And like my spiritual dad, Dr. Alan Bagg says, now I'm going to try and imitate his voice. Life was a choice. Choose life. <laughs> Amen. So we choose life by calling it. Amen. We call life into our homes, life into our health, life into our marriages, life into our businesses, life into our jobs, life into our children. Amen. Life into our husbands, life into our wives, life, life in every single area. We have to call life. Amen. If you are not going to call it, it's going to lie there dead. And it will only do that which you say. Remember the word of God says exactly as I've heard you say in my ear is what I will do to you. Amen? So we get fear out by speaking faithful words of life. If you don't start speaking life, fear will enter in. And fear has torment. Fear has torment. If you don't believe me, let's read 1 John 4, 18 in KGB. It says this, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts it out fear. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. The torment is in the fear. If you're going to say yes to fear, you're saying yes to torment. you got to get that. The, the torment is in the fear. Amen. Fear of failing, fear of dying, fear of never having enough, not being able to sleep at night and not being able to eat as the enemy tormenting you. And you know what? As children of God, as ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven, we don't need to tolerate that. We've got power and authority over the enemy. But if we're not going to exercise it, he's going to run a mock with us. And we're going to become slaves to him. He will even dictate your giving. He will dictate your tithes and your offering. No, you can't give this month because what if this happens? Remember, you need to do that. And he dictates to you about what you can give to, to God. And it belongs to him. It's not even yours. Amen. 2 Timothy 1.7 in the New King James says this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And a fearful mind or a tormented mind is not a sound mind. I'll say it again. A fearful mind or a tormented mind is not a sound mind. A mind that does not believe of the, the love of the Father is a fear-controlled mind. 
If you don't believe the love that God has for you, you are controlled by fear. And the enemy will come in and he will run amok with you. He will make you so emotional. And men can get emotional too, not just women. Men will also get emotional. Oh, we can't do this. We can't buy that. We can't go here. We can't drive there. We can't do this. And when fear starts to control your life, you know who's become your master. And if you're in fear, you are in torment. And the devil cannot do anything to you apart from fear. Just like God can't do anything to you for you apart from faith. So get fear out and faith in by declaring with your mouth the promises of God over your life. Declare it, amen. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. I'm healed and whole. I will live and not die. I will live to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. My life is complete, nothing missing, nothing broken. My every need is supplied according to the riches of my country in heaven. Amen. By Jesus Christ, fear has no hold on me. Shout it out loud. Fear, you have no hold on me. Because God did not give me the spirit of fear. God did not give me the spirit of fear. I have a sound mind. I believe the love God has for me. And I rest in his love. Whatsoever I do it, prospers. Whatsoever I put as my hands unto, it succeeds. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Amen. My father loves me and he cares for me. And I choose to believe his love for me. And not the enemy's fear. Amen. There is no greatest joy that it gives the father to see his children walk confidently in his love. Confidently in knowing that what he has said in his word, he's able to do. So even this morning as we get ready for, with our tithes and offerings, you can stand with me. That we are not moved and we are not slaves to fear. And he, that's, the enemy does not dictate to us. Say, you must say that loud. The enemy does not dictate when I can give and how I give. I'm not moved by the economic times. I prosper even in the time of famine. Why? Because I keep on giving. I keep on tithing. I keep on returning. The, you see, you return the tithe. You don't sow the tithe. You return it. Because it's not yours. It's his. So when you get something from someone that's not yours, you return it to them. You're not giving them anything that they didn't have before. Amen? They entrusted you with that thing and they expect it back. Amen? And so you get to return the tithe and you get to sow your seeds. Hallelujah. And so we keep on prospering even in tough economic times because we keep on doing what our country requires of us to do. And therefore we can never fail. And therefore we don't have to be in fear. Because your every need is met. You are well healed and whole. You are blessed going out and blessed coming in. Amen. You got to get fear out. Some of you are looking at me like, <laughs> you can't play with the devil. If there's a snake in my house, I kill it personally. Pastor Wellington has got this thing of taking the pool net and going, putting it in the bush. Sorry for the snake lovers. I kill it. Sorry for those watching online as well. If you're snake lovers, forgive me. But you know what? I don't play with stuff like that. If I don't want it in my house, I'm going to get it out. Amen? If you don't want fear in your life and you don't want to be a slave to it, and if you don't want it to dictate you, get it out and serve notice on it. In Jesus' name, hold your seed in your hand this morning. Father, we bless and we honor your holy name this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you that we are no longer slaves to fear. No fear here. We declare your word, Almighty God, Jesus. We believe your word and we speak it continually, O oh God. We declare, Almighty God, Jesus, that it gives you great delight to prosper and to increase us, O oh God. To increase us and our children, O oh God. To increase our businesses, our jobs, O oh God. Everything that concerns us, O oh God. We refuse, to, we refuse to give in to fear that has torment. No, we choose, Almighty God, faith over fear this morning. And even as we sow our seeds, as we return the tithe, as we sow our offerings, oh God, I decree a blessing over your people, oh God. Blessed, Almighty God, are they going, Father God, out and blessed are they coming in and blessed are they sitting down and standing up and everything they set as their hands unto, oh God, I decree it blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people say,